In this video, we are going to uh, analyze the NMR spectrum of these four different molecules. We've got four different molecules here. We have four proton NMR spectra. We're going to match the molecules up to each spectra, and we're going to analyze the different features of the spectra. We're going to start by just identifying the number of equivalent protons in each one of the molecules. The first molecule has one, two, three, four types of protons, which means that we would expect to see four peaks in the spectrum. Our next one has one, two, three, four, five, five types, five peaks. Molecule number three has only two different types of protons, so this we would expect to see two peaks. And the last one on our list has three types, so three peaks. Since each one of these molecules has a different number of types of equivalent protons and it has a different number of peaks, we'll be able to match the molecules up to the NMR spectra just simply by looking at the number of peaks in each spectrum. Our first molecule, our first spectrum has two peaks in the NMR. The molecule that has two types of protons is this molecule right here. I'm going to redraw the structure of this molecule on the spectrum. And what we're going to do next is assign each of the types of protons in this molecule to the two peaks in the spectrum. So we're going to figure out the protons A, are they giving us this peak or are they giving us this peak right here? We've got two things that are going to help us identify and match the protons to the peaks. One is the chemical shift. Um, and I, what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to draw the hydrogens in on this molecule because it makes it a little bit easier for us to visualize the shift. So these protons out here, which we are labeling as A, all of these protons are two bonds away from the oxygen, which is pretty close. The protons that are over here on this terp-butyl group, these protons are also pretty close to the oxygen, but they are a little bit further away. They're one, two, three bonds away. So these are our proton B. So since proton, protons A are closer to the oxygen atom, that means that they will have a more significant shift. Their peak will be a little bit further to the left. And that means that these guys must be B. The second thing that we're going to do is look at the integration for these two peaks. This peak is integrating at 333, and this one is integrating at 1,000. Remember that this is the ratio of protons A to protons B. And we just want to simplify that ratio into numbers that make a little bit more sense. And this is a 1 to 3 ratio, which is consistent with what we can see for protons A and B. We have three proton A's and we have nine proton B's, which is also a 1 to 3 ratio. So this looks like we've done as much work as we can here. Let's take a look at our next spectrum. This spectrum has three peaks, so we want to go find our molecule that has three different types of protons. Three different types of protons is this molecule right here. I'm going to copy its structure so we can analyze the IR or the NMR. And the NMR, the structure for this molecule looks like, actually forgot the end of it, looks like this. And we, I'm going to draw the hydrogens in. So these first hydrogens we labeled as A, and then we have two hydrogens here that were labeled as B, and then we have our nine hydrogens out here on the tert-butyl group that I'm labeling as C. So let's think in terms of integration. These hydrogens, there's actually three oxygen atoms in this molecule, so hydrogen A, they are two bonds away from one oxygen, one, oh, sorry, one, two, three bonds away one, two, three, four, five bonds away from oxygen number two, and one, two, three, four, five bonds away from oxygen number three. So I'm just going to kind of write that in parentheses. Three bonds, five bonds, and five bond distance. B protons are one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three bonds away from everything. So the B protons are very close to all three of the oxygens. The C protons are three bonds away from the first oxygen, but five bonds away from the second oxygen and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bonds away from the third oxygen. So the 
Proton B will be the most deshielded because they are very close to a whole lot of oxygen atoms. So that's going to be these guys right here. And then A will be the next most deshielded. And then C is the most shielded. Now in terms of integration, the ratio of these protons are 249 to 380 to 1121. In our molecule, the ratio is 2 to 3 to 9. Um, and if we wanted to analyze the integrals, kind of pretending like if we didn't actually know uh, what, the, what the number of atoms or hydrogen atoms were in the molecule, we would just simply divide all of our integral values by the smallest of all the integrals. So 249 divided by 249 is 1. 380 divided by 249 is probably going to be about one and a half. Um, it is 380 divided by 249, 1.5. And 11, 1121 divided by 249, that's probably four and a half, 4.5. So this works out to be a ratio of 1 to 1.5 to 4.5, which is equal to a ratio of 2 to 3 to 9, which is consistent with our molecule, 2 to 3 to 9. Let's look at our next NMR spectrum. This is one that has four peaks, so we want to look at a molecule that has four types of protons. There's this guy right here. I'm going to copy this. Right there. And our four types of protons. This is proton A. Here is proton B. I think I labeled these ones as C. And our OH is D. So these are the A's. These are the B's. These are the C's. This is the D. These are also C. In terms of deshielding, proton D is right on the oxygen, so that is going to be the most deshielded proton out of all of them. And then for our others, we have A that is one, two, three bonds away from this oxygen. B is one, two, three bonds away from this oxygen, and three bonds away from another oxygen. So this is probably B. Our C, or excuse me, the next peak over is probably protons A, and the most shielded ones are probably these guys out here, which are pretty far away. We can double check all of that by looking at the integrals. 65, the integral for peak that we labeled D, divided by 65 is 1. So that's consistent with our proton D. We have 1 of that guy. 142, which is the integral for the peak that we labeled B, 142 divided by 65 is about 2. And B has two protons, so that works. 198, our peak for protons A, divided by 65, that's going to be about 3, which is consistent. And then last but not least, 404 divided by 65 is about six and that's consistent with the six protons for that we labeled c our last spectrum on here has one two three four five peaks and that is this molecule right here let's analyze this spectrum and we've got couple of protons out here. We'll label these ones A and B. We've got a couple of protons over here. We'll label these ones C and D. And then we've got some protons down here. We'll label all these ones E. Uh, in terms of D shielding, 
protons A and C are both equally um, close to the oxygen atom. Protons A are also right up against a carbon-carbon double bond, which is also known to be deshielding. So these protons right here, or this peak right here, is going to correspond to A because they are close to the double bond and they're also being deshielded by um, the oxygen atom as well. And that's also going to be, um, this guy over here is going to be proton B, which is close to the double bond and also close to the oxygen atom. These two peaks over here are going to correspond to our hydrogen atoms that are not sitting on the double bond. The first peak, the one that is the most deshielded, will be for hydrogen C because they're very close to the oxygen, and then the next one will be for hydrogens D because they're a little further away. And this peak, last but not least, is going to be the two methyl groups that are very far away from the oxygen. In terms of calculating the integrals, our smallest integral value is 133, so we're going to divide all of our integrals by 133. That's going to give us approximately one hydrogen corresponding to proton A, which is exactly what we see, and it's going to give us also one hydrogen corresponding to proton B, which is what we see. Um, for 255 divided by 133, that's about 2, which is what we see here. And 303 divided by 133 is also about 2. Integrals rarely calculate out perfectly. And 811 divided by 133 is 6.1, which is consistent with what we see for E.